G'day, this is your Pocket Game Master, and I'm here today to teach you about Tableplop. Tableplop is a virtual tabletop used to run games like Donuts and Dragons, Call of Cthulhu, Fate, Warhammer, and Vampire the Masquerade. It is similar to other platforms like Roll20, Fantasy Grounds, or Foundry, but it's focused on simplicity and ease of use as well as supporting PC, mobile, and tablet users. Tableplop is entirely free, with additional benefits for Patreon subscribers. I'll now teach you the basics of using Tableplop. Go to tableplop.com. Now click on register at the top right of the site. Fill in the details of your account. Once your account is made, click on campaigns in the top left of the screen. Now click New. Now we've made a new campaign. Take special note of the invite link in the bottom left of the screen. If you give someone this invite link, they can join your campaign as a player. Now let's join our first scene by clicking on it. When this prompt appears, select Just Me. Here's our first scene in Tableplop. If you click and hold, you can pan around the scene, or if you move your mouse wheel, you can zoom in and out. Let's add an asset to the scene. You can click and drag to pull an asset straight onto the scene from your computer. It should appear in a few seconds. You can move the asset around by clicking and dragging it. Alternatively, you can rotate it or resize it using the icons in the corner of the asset. If you hold down the shift key while moving the asset, it will snap to the grid. Another way to add an asset to Tableplop is to open up the Asset tab in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. Then select Add. Click Select Files and choose the file you'd like to add. Once the file has been uploaded, click and drag it onto Tableplop. You can also lock an asset to prevent you from accidentally moving it while playing. Right click the asset, then select lock. The asset can't be moved once it's locked. However, if you hold the alt key, you can move a locked asset. Letting go of the alt key will re-lock the asset. Let's add some more creatures to this scene. Open up the resource tab on the right hand side of the screen and select tableplop creatures. Let's find a goblin. Here's one, click on Goblin, then select Pick Goblin. As you can see, the goblin's added to the table. Let's right click him and duplicate. There we are, now we've got three goblins. Now they are a bit hard to tell apart. So let's select one of the goblins, then we'll go to the left hand side of the screen and we'll add a bracket with the letter A between it. We'll do that for every goblin with a different letter. There we go, our goblins are very easy to tell apart. We can also add some conditions by right clicking the goblin token and selecting manage conditions. We can make them appear dead or we can make them appear blind. We can also hide the token by right clicking it and selecting hide. This will make the token invisible to any players looking at the scene. We can unhide them by right clicking them and selecting show. Now you may have noticed that the goblins are stacking on top of each other in a certain order. You can change this order by going to the background tab on the left hand side of the screen. You can move the goblins around however you wish. But if you place a goblin under the map asset, it will disappear under the map. Whatever's highest in this hierarchy will get priority on the map, remember that for future use. Another way to manage your assets is to put them in a different folder in the hierarchy. As you can see, the characters folder is higher than the background folder. You can click and drag the goblin into the characters tab, and now it will always be above the background layer. Alternatively, you can right click the token and move it to characters from there. Let's add a token for our players to use. First open up the resource tab on the right hand side of the screen 
and select tableplop characters. Let's choose a human fighter. Now the human fighter looks just like the goblin as far as the token goes, but open up the token details with this little red arrow on the left hand side of the screen and select convert to character. Let's choose SRD 5.0. This assumes we're playing 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons. Now the character is being converted, you can assign it to a player by selecting this drop down menu. If they've clicked the link and join your campaign, their name should appear here. You can open up the character's details and you can see their ability scores and modifiers. You can change these to whatever you want. If you select the little aeroplane arrow, it will roll the skill check relative to whatever you've clicked. You can also choose some of the pre-made actions and change them as you like. You can also make your own rolls by making sure you've got the chat window open on the right hand side of the screen. Select the dice you'd like to roll, add any modifiers you'd like, and you can even add advantage or disadvantage. If you mouse over the result, you can see the exact maths that went behind the dice roll. If you choose hidden, then only you or the game master can see the result of the roll. If you'd like to start a turn order or roll an initiative, simply open the initiative tab in the middle of the right hand section of the screen. If you want to add a token manually, right click the token and select add to initiative. Then click the number next to the token to put it anywhere on the initiative you'd like. If you click on a character token and select the initiative roll, it will roll the initiative and automatically add that token to the initiative. Once you have every creature in initiative, you can start it by selecting start tracking at the bottom of the screen. As you move through the rounds, it will count them up at the bottom of the screen. If you click these three dots, you can stop initiative tracking. There's some other tools you may find helpful on Tableplop. They're at the very bottom of the screen. The first one is the measurement tool. Click anywhere on the scene and drag it about to measure distances. If you push the space bar, you can add an anchor point while measuring. The second tool is the text tool. Select it to add a text box to the scene. You may need to open up the tab on the left hand side to change the details of the text box. The third tool is the drawing tool. Once you select it, go to the tab on the left hand side and choose the details of what you'd like to draw. Then draw on the scene however you like. Once you finish drawing, use the deselect token and you can move the drawing around just like it was a token. Finally, we have the Fog of War tool. In order to use it, you'll need to right click the Fog of War section at the left hand side of the screen and select Show. This will darken out the screen. Any area that's dark, players will not be able to see. You can cut certain shapes into the Fog of War using the tools below. Once you've finished making shapes, you can select the toggle feature and you can reveal certain parts of the map to the players as you see fit. And there you have it, all the basic features of running a campaign using Tableplop. If you need any more help, look in this video's description for the Tableplop Discord and good luck with your adventures.